Welcome to The Lavender Lifestyle, the podcast on lifestyle design for millennials. I'm Eileen, and I'm here to guide you to become a master artist of life. Every Sunday, you'll get new insight and inspiration on how to create your dream life. After the episode, the conversation continues in our Lavender Lifestyle Facebook group, so I can't wait to see you there. Life is an art. Make it your masterpiece. Hi everyone, it's Eileen, your host of The Lavender Lifestyle, and today we're back with a new guest for the show. Her name is Linda Kausament. Linda is a corporate business consultant turned world peace warrior. She's made it her mission to make acts of compassion and empathy as normal as brushing our teeth, and she does so through portraits, books, programs, and workshops. She's the creator of How It Is To Be You, the website, and also the ebook, The Everyday Guide to World Peace. You can find more about her at howitistobeyou.com. Hi, Linda. Hi there. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm really good. Good. And you're calling from Amsterdam, am I right? Yes, you're right. <laughs> All right. So, Linda, I want to hear about your story. So, you said you used to be a business consultant, and now you're a world peace warrior. What? Where did that come from? What happened? Well, I guess I've gone through a struggle my entire life. Something that I've been um, writing about and talking about is that I've always felt like I was missing a manual to life. Like Everybody got it except for me, which is rather annoying <laughs> because it always mm -hmm. felt like no, I was I, on the I outside like looking too. in, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously not very comfortable. But I figured, well, let's just try to be as normal as possible and go through high school and go to university, study business, have the career and have the car and the house and everything. And at a certain point, I had everything. And I realized that I wasn't quite happy, um, that something didn't feel quite right and that there was something missing in my life, something that was more meaningful, even though I didn't. I wasn't able to express that at that time. Um, and it was also around that time that I started doing yoga and I moved to Amsterdam and I met a lot of people in the spiritual scene and um, it sort of developed from there. But I've always kept the business consulting and the spiritual part of my life uh, um, separate. There were two different streams in my life. And... At a certain point, I just felt like this doesn't make any sense anymore. And the business thing isn't making me happy. It doesn't give me the energy that I want to. So I decided to simply rent out my house and pack my car and go travel through Europe for a year. And ask oh, wow. all sorts of people the question, how is it to be you? So without a plan or an agenda or anything, just out of curiosity... And what made you come up with that question? Well, <laughs> that goes back to that manual of life. At a certain point, I felt that I might be able to write that. And then half an hour later, I realized, okay, I might not be the perfect person to write it because I'm just one person in seven billion. But I could figure out how it is to be someone else how people experience life, how they experience emotions, what they struggle with. And that's where the question came from. Mm, so you wanted to collect experiences, the human experience. Yeah, that. And I really wanted to consciously connect with other people yeah. without any judgment or really going beyond my judgment. Okay, so go on. After you started asking <laughs> people this question, what happened? Well, I was doing that and I was traveling throughout Europe, living in Berlin and Budapest and all sorts of really great places. And it was around the time where uh, the Paris attacks happened. So that oh. was the winter of 2015 where I realized that even though it was great what I was doing, I felt it needed to be bigger still. And mm -hmm. that, that, dream or ambition around world peace, that that was something that I really needed to pursue. 
I realized that world peace was something that I wanted to actively work on. And that's when I decided to write the everyday guide to world peace. Um, which was really difficult. <laughs> because it started <laughs> as... I mean, how... Where do you even start um, thinking of how to get to world peace? So on the one mm -hmm. hand, it is... Or the problem was how to get there. How to voice it in a way that it makes sense to people that it is something relatable and something that people might want to get behind mm -hmm. uh, and on the other hand there was this very personal struggle and insecurity of me being just me or at least that's how it felt I'm just a Dutch girl I haven't studied anything in that area i haven't worked for any ngo i haven't experienced war or trauma or anything so it felt yeah i was yeah out of place in tackling this topic so i had to overcome that first as well yeah i mean once you wrote it can you tell us a little bit about what's in it yeah of course well even though world peace sounds giant and it is and I, I, I really doubt that we'll ever get there, or at least in our generation. But the point is, is that it starts with us. That we can experience peace within ourselves, within our lives, in the relationships that we have, with the people close to us, with uh, the, the, the cashier in the supermarket, with people driving the bus. If we experience peace there, and if we live happy lives, it will become easier to let that happiness overflow and spread, and that we can inspire other people to be happy and peaceful yeah, too. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that's basically the foundation. And the question, how is it to be you? is also fundamental because I, I really think that asking yourself this question, how is it to be me on a regular basis, will give you insights in yourself that you might otherwise not get. Uh, and asking this question to other people will help you understand people better and it will help you realize that you're not the only one who feels that way uh, every now and then and yeah. I, I, I've experienced that it's amazing that everybody's just as human as I am as everybody is and it really helped me value our unique differences instead of fearing them or judging them and that's how I think we can actually get to peace yeah can you give some examples of answers that people would say to how it is to be you i'm just curious <laughs> uh it's very broad some people immediately go to yes it's great to be me because i love my family i love that i'm able to take care of my family and that i have friends who i can talk to and they're very content with who they are and then there's a friend of mine, I asked her this question. She was one of the first people I asked. And she said, well, it's really not that great to be me at all. But oh. that's not what people want to hear. So, yeah, in general, it is okay. <laughs> oh. And then she really wanted to move into this positive version of herself. Whereas that wasn't the truth. So it really, it really differs. Um, but all in all, the conversations I have uh, on this question are incredibly in-depth and insightful and rather vulnerable as well. There are many people who struggle with um, insecurities and fears and not being able to make the most out of life. And um, yeah, apparently that's something that we all do. Yeah, I agree. 
I think if we all could like sit down at a table, if if you sit down at a table with someone with like completely different views from you, I think if you can talk it out and share your experiences, at the end of the day, you can still be friends. Like everyone will can still connect on a human level, you know? Because like, yeah, yeah I, that's what I believe. If you truly share your authentic self and your struggles, whatever you're going through, and anyone can relate. Yeah, definitely. But it's also very scary it's um it's incredibly scary to be vulnerable because mm -hmm. it could very well be that even though that you try to be open and go beyond your own judgments that other people might judge you and hurt you yeah exactly still so there is yep. this weird disconnect that we're all looking for this human connection that's so open and so raw and so vulnerable and so meaningful. And yet we're afraid of it as well. I mean, we're afraid because we're afraid to get hurt. Because when you open up your heart, there is a possibility to get hurt. Yeah, definitely. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. No, my motto, or it's not really my motto, but it's something that I say a lot, is that uh, I, at least for myself, will not let the things that scare me stop me. Yes. So in my business, I blog and I try to blog about very open and personal things, though I don't always succeed, <laughs> but I want to vlog as well. So go on videos. And when I do interviews uh, online on video, that's perfectly fine because I'm relating to someone else and answering someone's questions. But I've been having so much trouble of just getting beyond that camera uh, on my own and let my conscious free flow uh, around a certain topic it feels too mm -hmm. too close to me so that's mm -hmm. that's an example of the vulnerability that's so hard to to show and to share even though this is obviously what I do and what I um, what I try to inspire in other people as well yeah I mean, I'm sure you've come far in your journey. In the beginning, you weren't ready to share anything. And then now you're sharing a lot online. So do you, do you have tips for people who want to become more vulnerable and share online? For me, it really helped to start with people I trust. And uh, maybe not immediately go online, but have conversations and perhaps take a personal growth type workshop or, or two or three first so that you learn how to share yourself in front of someone else, in front of a group and that you experience the, um, the joy and the safety and the, the energy you get from that. How, how that experience is worth so much more than not doing it. Once you've yeah. experienced that, it will become easier and easier because you know what you've got to win. Uh, so you focus on what you have to gain from sharing yourself instead of what you have to lose or what you have to fear. Mm. Um, so that's one. The other thing is to just do it. <laughs> and um, that's what I did with blogging. And it's still hard. And sometimes I still think, oh, this might be too much. Or I get stuck in myself and I can't really share myself, which frustrates me to hell. But it's just a matter of trying and, and keep going out there. All right, before we go on, I have to tell you about our sponsor, FreshBooks. So if you're a freelancer or small business owner, FreshBooks is an easy accounting software that's the simplest way to be more organized and productive with your day-to-day -day paperwork. So with FreshBooks, you can send professional-looking invoices in less than 30 seconds, set up online payments to get paid up to four days faster, and more. Even if you're not a freelancer, you can still use FreshBooks to keep track of your expenses. So my favorite part is that you can take a photo of your receipts with your phone and upload it straight to the FreshBooks app as an expense. So it's super fast, super easy. FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to my listeners. So if you want to claim that, just go to freshbooks.com slash lifestyle and enter the Lavender Lifestyle in their How Did You Hear About Us section. So that's freshbooks.com slash lifestyle. All right, back to the interview. 
I love it. So just a recap for our listeners. You first said that start with sharing with a small group of people that you trust with or and possibly take workshops, get, get your practice because the gains that you get from sharing your vulnerability is so much better than not sharing, right? And then secondly, just do it, <laughs> which I love. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. yeah, one of the things that I um, am working on now is developing a peace workshop. And mm. I've, I've done, obviously, a lot of workshops in the business world, but also in the personal growth world. And I know that I'm good in front of a group and that I can facilitate like the best of them. But I also know that one of the things that <laughs> I sometimes do is that I get into this uh, rational mode where I sort of think, oh, this needs to be done and this needs to be done. And then it's me in my heels and my, my pencil skirt, just organizing everything just like I used to do as a business consultant. But in these peace workshops, it's all about vulnerability. Like, mm-hmm. That has to be the core of it. And I'm designing an entire program, but I already know that uh, that can change immediately if the energy or the group uh, uh, asks for something else or, or if, if just something else is necessary to get that vulnerability out there. And that can only happen when I'm as vulnerable as possible, which of course is yes. uh, set scary. So what I'm planning now is uh, uh, a test workshop with close friends who I trust and who I know I can share myself with but of whom I also know that they will be um, not so much critical, but very constructive in their feedback, that they're not afraid to tell me like it is, mm, uh, but in a good. very loving way. So that's, that's, that's some, something that I do, and that very, very much helps me as well uh, move forward and go deeper into sharing myself with the rest of the world, because I do feel that that's a necessary thing. That's wonderful. I'm curious because especially today in our culture, I mean, the inauguration of the U.S. president just happened. Like there's all of this stuff that's changing and there's a lot of tension, a lot of just uncertainty. And I want to ask you, what is your best advice for people like us, just normal, regular people? What can we do to be peace warriors? How can we improve the state of things? I guess you can go two directions. First of which is what we've seen last weekend, which was amazing. Just go out mm-hmm. into the street and express your frustrations and your anger in a peaceful way. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that I've, I've been wondering myself, obviously, as well, that yes, of course, the systems need to change and the structures need to, need to change. And there's the economy and the education system and oh, the political minefield that obviously needs to alter in a way that that makes much more sense to everyone but Mm -hmm. I've got no clue where to begin and I don't think anyone does or Mm -hmm. of course there are some people who think they do but uh, it's rather doubtful that that they know everything or are able to do everything so instead of focusing on those things that you can't really change uh, and instead of pointing fingers out of frustrations to people who are way out of reach and who are not willing to listen to you, uh, take the responsibility for your own peace and your own happiness and your own life mm-hmm. into your own hands and start reflecting on yourself, on that what makes you unhappy, what you can do to make yourself happy and joyful and peaceful and I know that's that's not always easy especially when you're when you don't have a job or when you're um, you're not living in a country or an area that has an infrastructure that's very supportive Um, but especially for us in the west the the lucky ones I guess uh, we have the luxury um, to be able to do that And we have the luxury to change our lives and and redirect our lives in such a way that it does bring us happiness, that we don't uh, do what society asks us to do or that we don't do what our families have told us to do, but that we can do what we love to do, 
what makes our eyes shine and what makes our hearts swell up each yes. and every day. Because when that happens, you will instantly inspire other people to do the same. And it will be very slowly, but that is the way that, that we can spread peace around in a more effective and um, ultimately structural and constructive way. I love it. I think you answered the question perfectly because peace <laughs> really starts from within. It starts with yourself. If you want to help create world peace, you have to make sure that you have inner peace first. And if yes. you're living a happy, peaceful life, then you're going to affect your community around you, which slowly trickles into the rest of society. It's not easy. So if it starts with like yeah. every individual trickling into their own communities, then eventually we'll be at a better state. And I think that's, it's beautiful. It's always good to remember to keep peace and love first rather than getting yeah. all caught up in the conflict and the craziness of what's going on in the world. Yeah. And also your happiness should always come first. Yes. Um, I know how, I mean, my heart goes out to, to anyone suffering. I mean, I can't, I mean, if, if I think about that too much or if I, if I open myself up uh, to, to that too much, I wouldn't be able to get out of bed <laughs> at all. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. uh, because I want to help everyone and I can't and I just don't even have the space in myself to do so. So I've, I've really had to learn that my happiness comes first because only when I yes. feel happy in myself, when I feel good in my life, when I'm strong and healthy and I have my own clarity, uh, that's when I can actually help. And that's yes. something that a lot of people, especially women, <laughs> tend to forget. We tend to help other people first. But it's like, uh, you know, in an airplane, um, when the, the oxygen masks come down, you first have to put your own oxygen mask on before you can put it onto your, your child or whoever sits next to you. And that's really how this peace thing works as well. Yeah, I agree completely. You have to help yourself before you can help others. And I agree, your, your own happiness is first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have a couple last questions and they're short ones. So I'm curious, do you have a current favorite book or a resource, whether it's like a podcast or blog that you love? I am a giant fan of Ash Amberger. Um, she runs the middlefingerproject.org and she's really mm. all about sales and marketing and building business for online entrepreneurs. Um, but she does it in a way that is so authentic and so real and so human that her blogs are just a joy to read because she's so open and she really hits the the spots between humanity or being human and being a businesswoman or a man as mm. well. And, and it's, uh, it's incredible. She's one of the most authentic people out there that I've discovered so far uh, um, on the internet. Oh, great. Okay. I'm going to ask you for that link and I'll post the link to her page yeah. in the, in the blog post of this podcast. Awesome. And then do you have a favorite quote I think the first one that springs to mind is um, used a lot, but it remains a good one. Plus, I'm a big fan of Star Wars, so that would be do or do not, there is no try from Yoda. Okay, <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> All right, and then lastly, where can our listeners find you online? Yeah, as you said in the beginning, I'm on howitistobeyou.com. I have a Facebook page that is of the same name. So just search how it is to be you on Facebook. I'm on Twitter as well under the name Linda Kausemens, uh, which I'm sure you'll link to later. Yes, and really. I also uh, do Instagram under the name how it is to be you. All right. Thank you so much, Linda. It was such a pleasure to speak with you. And I hope everyone out there enjoyed this as much as I did. And everyone, go out and be a peace warrior. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you for having me. 
All right, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to The Lavender Lifestyle. If you like the podcast, please show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. It helps me so much and also helps other people find the show. You can also catch me on YouTube and Instagram at Lavender, where I have even more content for the artist of life. All right, love you all. Bye.